Beat-em-ups are kind of like the video game equivalent of comfort food. They're definitely not the most nutritious things for you, but they're a warm, comforting constant that are always there to make you feel good when you need them. And in the genre, people typically turn to games like Final Fight and Streets of Rage, but just like there are a million different ways to make meatloaf, there are lots of great beat-em-ups that are just lying there forgotten, waiting to make you feel better. So today I want to talk about one of my favorites, Brawl Brothers for the Super Nintendo. Brawl Brothers was developed and published by Jalico for the SNES in 1993. It's a direct sequel to 1992's Rival Turf, although it wasn't marketed that way. This is kind of confusing, so try to stay with me. In Japan, Rival Turf was known as Rushing Beat, and its sequel, Rushing Beat Ron, was released in North America as Brawl Brothers. They feature the same lead characters, Rick Norton and Douglas Build, although in Rival Turf they're renamed Jack Flack and Uzi Nelson. Compounding the confusion, they're called Hack and Slash in Brawl Brothers, so there's not even any consistency between the North American releases. However, some European releases did subtitle Brawl Brothers with Rival Turf 2. The third game in the series, Rushing Beat Shura, was released here as the Peacekeepers, where Norton and Build keep their original Japanese names. Whew. Anyway, like every other game in the genre, Brawl Brothers has you traversing several stages by going from left to right and beating up tons of dudes. Also, like every other game in the genre, there's not a lot of variety in said dudes, although there are some fun designs. There's normal street toughs, but there are also more outside-the-box enemies, like guys with mecha arms, professional wrestling rejects, and Tycho from Penny Arcade. As you embark on your epic journey to beat the stuffing out of these ne'er-do-wells, you've got four Brawl Brothers and one Brawl Sister to choose from. Hack is a speedy character with quick combos, Slash is a slow, imposing powerhouse with bone-crunching body slams, Lord J is a slow-moving judo master who looks like he loves the Los Angeles Lakers, Kazan is a lightning-fast ninja who uses a sword in his combos, and my personal favorite is Wendy, a surprisingly nimble pro wrestler who uses a jumping pile driver. Honestly, I think it's totally awesome that this game was made in 1993, and it was already bucking the female character being fast and weak stereotype. Go Jalico! When you start the game, you pick two characters, or one each when you're playing two-player, because the three you don't pick wind up being bosses, because they were brainwashed or something? I don't know. In the Japanese version, they're clones, but I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention. I don't really need justification to go out and punch a bunch of bad guys, you know? The game offers standard one- and two-player modes, although I recorded this alone, so you get boring single-player footage. But it's also got a versus mode, which is kinda sorta fun in its own way, though I really like the stylized character sprites used as victory markers. So what makes Brawl Brothers so special? And why bother talking about it when there are so many other beat-em-ups out there? Well, really, it all comes down to details, and Jalico put a lot in this game that all add up to make a very satisfying experience. For one thing, the controls are really great. Everything's very tight and responsive, but one thing I really like is that when you punch and make contact, if you're pushing towards your enemy, you can inch towards him a bit. This allows you to punch him a couple of times and then go for a grab without being interrupted, which allows you to deal a nice amount of damage all in one go. Another benefit of this is that you're also able to turn around as you're attacking, so if you're quick enough, you can turn around mid-combo and beat up guys on both sides of you at once. Considering the hardest part of most beat-em-ups is getting surrounded, this is a great thing. I don't know if this was all intentional design or not, but I'm certainly glad it's there. As a heads up, you definitely want to go into the options menu before you play, as the default settings guarantee you a bad time. You can adjust the difficulty and amount of lives and continues you get, as well as turn on Angry Mode, which is one of the coolest things in the game. Angry Mode is a super cool feature that powers up your character after you've taken enough damage. You'll start to flash, and all your attacks get a significant boost, especially your throws. Wendy's pile driver is enough to make Zangief jealous, and Hack will throw characters so hard that they fly off the screen. It's a super fun addition, and I don't know why in the world it would default to off. Environmental hazards are a mainstay of the beat em up genre, and Brawl Brothers has them in spades. Of course it's fun to toss dudes off of buildings, but it's even more fun to suplex them into landmines or electrical floor panels. They even got creative with the food choices. Who needs turkey when you have cheese? Or pancakes?
My main gripe with the game is the maze-like levels. There are two stages that the localization team decided to turn into mazes in an effort to make the game feel less linear for a North American audience, but as a result, these stages just feel too long and overly clumsy. If only there was a way to play the Japanese version. Oh wait, there is! When the Jalico logo pops up as you power the game on, keep hitting B, A, X, and Y in that order. Eventually, you'll see a glitch title screen. Press down three times and then start and you'll be taken to the options menu. Once you exit, you'll see the title screen for Rushing Beat Ron. That's right, the entire Japanese version is on the North American cartridge. In addition to fixing the two bungled stages, Norton and Build get their correct names and all the enemy names are changed to reflect the experiment theme of the Japanese original. I think hiding the Japanese version on the US cart is a super neat easter egg, and as far as I know, this is the only Super Nintendo game to do something like this. Like always, Brawl Brothers isn't going to cost you very much, with the loose cart going for about $15. But just as a heads up, it seems like the price has been slowly going up over the past six months, so definitely keep an eye out for a good deal. Rushing Beat Ran easily goes for double the price of Brawl Brothers, so why bother spending the money when it's right here on the cart for like half the price. And if you have a Wii, it's available on the Virtual Console service for about 8 bucks, but you know me. Physical media all the way. Brawl Brothers certainly doesn't look like much at first glance, but it's definitely got it where it counts. It didn't try to turn the young beat-em-up genre on its ear, but it definitely added enough of a unique flavor to spice it all up. While the price is getting a little high for something like this, you're technically getting two games in one, and there's nothing like a good beat-em-up when you're playing with a buddy. If you can find it for the right price, do not pass it up. 